world. Like, I'm assuming that the uh, big monolithic uh, healthcare system is not going to just stand by while you print tens of millions of dollars in revenue and say, you know, we don't care about that. Um, what have you seen either in response from uh, legacy players or do you see uh, maybe not direct responses, but like behavior changes or anything there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the two largest players in lab testing are two publicly traded companies, Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp. Um, they are, you know, they're huge companies and they focus on a very different part of the service delivery model, R&D, brick and mortar, owning the lab value chain. We do not own the lab value chain. We partner across the country, right? Um, so they really are in a different business. Um, my argument would be they're not in the business that serves the patient. Um, that does not mean that they don't care about the patient. They're just in all these different types of businesses for where their competency is. Um, we have great relationships with both of them. To be honest, um, I'm not sure we're yet big enough to cause them any pain. Um, I have seen, though, they've both revamped or relaunched their direct to consumer or consumer initiated businesses in the last 18 months to two years. Um, and most recently, um, LabCorp launched Pixel, kind of took, uh, shuttered it a bit, and then has relaunched it as part of their COVID-19 response. And then Quest has a um, Quest Direct business um, to go in and have blood draws that they've, they've amped up a lot of their social advertising, social media advertising on. Um, I think what is undervalued by most healthcare organizations, this is not, not specific to LabCorp and Quest, is the value of community, customer experience, and brand. And that is something that is difficult to build. We have an NPS score across the business of a 70, a plus 70. That is world class for a lab test. This is how passionately people feel about our service. LabCorp and Quest MPS is negative. So I share this because, but, but to be clear, it's not because they're not providing value. It's the question of who is the value for? Who is the value for? And so as the value will shift more towards the patient and the consumer, I do think you'll start to see pressure across, across the um, healthcare delivery chain, right? Is, is this is the moment for the consumerization of healthcare. We've heard that phrase forever. We've heard the phrase personalized health. We've heard the phrase digital health. All of this is different ways of caring about the patient. And I think you'll finally start to see that come to a head and companies and large organizations have to do something about it. Do you see a world where um, that brick and mortar kind of um, much more, I'll call it bureaucratic, that's probably the wrong word, but, but just much more brick and mortar in a kind of physical world uh, approach to lab testing? There will definitely be lab tests that always have to be that way. Of course, but yeah. Trend uh, more towards this at home, direct to consumer, kind of what you're doing, or do you think there will be coexistence of the two models, right? For tests that can be at home and, and, and uh, done the direct consumer way. Um, I think until we have innovation around blood collection, um, I think that the two models will coexist. There are many companies working on this. Everlywell exists to hopefully partner with the companies that are successful in doing that. Um, or until we have assay innovation where tests that are conducted usually via blood can now be done via saliva or urine or some other method. So I think that is really the next frontier um, is how can we innovate around blood collection such that it can, it can really happen in much more mass adoption and shift away from these brick and mortar needs, which are expensive infrastructure. And yes, they will have to exist for tests that naturally have to be done that way. But there's a quite a large number of common tests that don't have to be done in a brick and mortar setting. And so I think that innovation will be the next step. Our goal is to be agnostic and say, hey, when there is a great innovation that is FDA approved, we want to be providing that experience to our consumers. Um, and it puts us in a really good position to capitalize on that once it's available for people.